game changers and life savers. In this week's show, we're celebrating some of the people who are doing an extraordinary job getting game into the hands of those who need it most. First up, game cook Kayat Brin is in the New Forest doing what it was created for, hunting. Then we head to Hastings to donate some prime venison cuts to Dom's Food Mission, a local food bank and charity desperate for good quality raw ingredients. Plus, are we shooting too many or too few? At the end of the pheasant shooting season, we investigate what markets exist for feathered game. We have news, we have hunting YouTube, and we are announcing a super, yes, really super prize draw at the British Shooting Show. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. That's what we say. We've got a home. We are in Hastings on the UK's south coast, best known for William the Conqueror and the Battle of 1066. We are also in the New Forest, created by the same William 13 years later as a dedicated hunting ground. Much has changed over the last thousand years, or has it? This morning, Kai has arranged to meet and donate venison to Dom from Dom's Food Mission. He and his team are trying their best to feed local families struggling to put food on the table. It sounds medieval, but it's not. It's modern day food poverty. It does hit you hard, yes, I'm not going to lie. It's not a nice thing to see because no one should be struggling at all. We're not, we're not a third world country, but what we see is not wow. nice. Um, Amazing. It's all from this area. Um, there's a, there's, so there's all, all meat. There's a, couple, there's a couple of extra little treats. Fill it there for yourselves if you want. Um, it's about 37 kilos of meat. Amazing. Thank you meat. very much. Yeah. These are perfect for our school project and it's local feeding local. Yeah. So. <laughs> More from Hastings in a bit. Firstly, we need some raw ingredients and where better than the living larder that is the New Forest. This is a special place where there is an abundance of game as well as free roaming domestic animals. You don't often see this. Kai is on a hunt swap with Elliot Pidgeley from New Forest Stalking. So today we're after Seeker. There's plenty of row about as well. We saw some yesterday. And you've got a, a small herd of fallow and some muntjac, is that right? Yes, yeah, correct. Cool. So yeah, so we've got four species here. So we're doing a, a, a management hunt on the, on the seeker this morning. There's a lot of them on the estate. Um, how many you were saying yesterday? Uh, yeah, so the resident herd is about 50 to 60 strong. Uh, and then we, we share a border with a neighboring estate who have a herd of close to 200. Yeah. So we've got 1,800 acres. They've got four or five times that. Okay, uh, yeah. So they've got a much more habitat for them, but we get a fair few crossing from there. So we've with our resident herd plus those, we probably see up to sort of 100, 120 okay. per year. So there are plenty of species on offer, but it's Seeker and Roe they're concentrating on. This morning, Kai is using a Blaza R8 in 3006. I'm using the Seiko Super Hammerhead 150 grain with my Blaza R8. Um, I've run out of my regular rounds, which is the um, RWS greens, which are really good. Um, but I know these are zeroed as well, the same. So we're going to use these in the seeker. These should be, you know, should be ideal, really. The first opportunity are these seeker moving towards cover. It's a young male. Elliot's father runs the pheasant shoot on this ground and Elliot runs the stalking. Yeah. Right, so that's your passion, the deer stalking. Yeah, yeah. And right your dad's cool. passion is, and your, your dad doesn't shoot either, does no, he? So no. it's just kind of bizarre. So you've got your dad who's a gamekeeper who doesn't... Yeah. I have begged and begged and begged to, uh, to take him out on a, uh, on a stalk. Yeah. And it's of absolutely no interest. That's right, yeah, the damage. You can see that all the tops have been eaten off. 
it's but purely at the moment it's just cull animals to especially with the cover crop behind us there you'll uh, you'll see a lot of damage that the the seeker mainly have done to that the row aren't too bad but the uh the the numbers of seeker that we've got yeah <laughs> as, as we talk about them um yeah with the number of seeker that we've got they are uh, they are hammering that you hear them barking yeah can you hear that it's amazing so either that's not that far away that that's just there there must be some interesting chats when deer start destroying the cover crops. There are row everywhere. Kai struggles to get close enough on the open fields. They're also in the wood. First, a close encounter with a doe and kid. She's been there for quite some time now, and uh, she doesn't seem all that phased. Then there is a lone doe, which Elliot asks Kai to take. We stalked hold of this woodland. We've seen mump jack. We've seen roe does with their young. We didn't see any um, roe bucks, but we've seen plenty of wildlife. But we were after a nice sized roe who didn't have a young in tow. So she was perfect for Elliot's management cull as well. And she'd be really good eating too. So 306, although we were out for seeker at the same time, obviously it does the job for both. The last opportunity is another open field situation. Some bramble is enough to mask the approach. If the one standing up is, is what I think is a doe, then I will take her first. And then if the other one appears, I'll take the other one. Obviously we can't shoot the bark. Okay. The strike is good, but she runs. She drops 50 yards across the field. Good it's been yeah. a successful day out with Elliot and New Forest stalking. So successful that there's plenty of meat to go around and even some to spare. Back in Sussex, Kai puts in a call to Dom at Dom's food mission. You can accept this mince, you can accept oh, yeah. like raw, raw food basically yep. and process that in yep. your own facilities. Yeah we can, yeah. So when we have a, a like a drop off night here, yeah. so we drop off the food, we have meat, fish, vegetables, amazing foods. Yeah. And, and then the uh, less fortunate will come and, and take them home, put them in freezers, things like that. Okay. Um, but with your venison, things like that, that we will receive off you guys, is that we make them into meatballs for children. So we have, our, nice. we have a uh, national award winning project called a Helping Hand Project. Yeah. And we're, in, we're running this in, a lot of schools want it. Yeah. We're running this full time in two schools at the minute in Hastings. Oh, okay. And we teach children life skills. So we take surplus food in, yeah. we make meals out of them. So they wash, chop and prepare food, hearty, healthy, oh, nutritious so meals. As well. yep. And then children, they're the children in need. They need that food. So when they've made that meal with their own bare hands, they take it home and they, they eat it. So they're eating, so we make sure they're eating. And look at us, we're feeding thousands and we're stopping 30 odd tonnes a year from going in the bin. And it started from a boot of a car. The issue is not unique to Hastings. Dom gets calls from all over the country. He can't reach everyone in need yet, but we have no doubt that with his drive and help from local suppliers like Kai, he'll get there. For more information about the work he is doing, go to domsfoodmission.com and look for New Forest Stalking on Facebook. Thank you, Kai. Thank you, Elliot, and thank you, Dom's Food Mission. Now, staying with the venison theme, Elliot is offering a row stalking outing as a prize for us. It will be sometime between the 15th of February and the 8th of March 2020, before the end of the doe season. And if you're a novice stalker, he can help you out. He's got a range and he'll help you prepare the carcass for your freezer. All you have to do using your skill and judgment is write the name of the king credited with creating the new forest in the comments below this film on YouTube. And I'll give you a clue, he's not called Norman. And we'll pick a winner in the next few weeks uh, in our usual draw way. Now, more conk than conqueror, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump.
This is Field Sports Channel News. Will we be able to shoot pigeons next month? In the run-up to the renewal of general licences on the 29th of February 2020, Bird Rights Group Wild Justice is unleashing its lawyers on the governments in both England and Wales. It has written to Natural Resources Wales to let them know that Welsh general licences are unlawful. It is also sending legal letters to Natural England. Neither government department has responded. Last week, Natural England angered antis by reintroducing the lethal controls of herring gulls and lesser black-backed gulls in England via an individual licence that you have to apply for. Basque is responding to the legal attack. Basque will fight this tooth and nail. There's just no justification for this. Wild Justice are attacking the countryside at a very time when government agencies are stretched to the limit trying to deliver a future for food, farming and the environment in a post-Brexit transition period. It's absolutely ridiculous. We're going to fight this, we're going to fight any attack on shooting and we're going to get this job done. A report has recommended that the number of deer in Scotland should be cut sharply. As we predicted, a review into the management of Scotland's deer said highland populations should not exceed 10 per square kilometre. This amounts to a halving of the population in some areas. The deer working group also calls for the abolition of closed seasons for males and reduction for females. A removal of the ban on night sites being used to hunt deer and a relaxation of the restrictions in place around night shooting. The Association of Deer Management Groups says the proposals would have a devastating effect on an important rural industry. The chairman of the Scottish Gamekeepers Association, Alex Hogg, reflects members' anger in a video he released. These men and women have managed deer selectively for decades. And if they get asked to take part in some state-sponsored slaughter up the glens, I think they would rather go to jail. Motorists and members of the public are at risk from an unsafe shooting range, according to a newspaper. Truckers at a roadside cafe on the M25 outside London heard bullets whizzing over their heads as novice marksmen practiced target shooting at the Full Metal Jacket Club in Waltham Abbey, less than 300 metres away. Prosecutors at Wood Green Crown Court say inexperienced and unsupervised club users were firing 2 2 rimfires at a bank that was not high enough, with stony patches that could cause the bullets to ricochet. Daniel Hammond and Kevin Foster deny firearms offences. The trial continues. Thanks to Steve Kearney and Andy McGarty for the story. Two men accused of offences under the Hunting Act 2004 have been found not guilty at Taunton Magistrates Court. Charges against Quantock Staghounds former huntsman Richard Down and whipper in Martin Watts were dropped after evidence provided by Antis failed to show illegal hunting. The Countryside Alliance is urging the police and CPS to review allegations made by activists against the rural community. The Country Food Trust's winter appeal smashed its target. The charity was set up four years ago to provide balanced and nutritious meals to some of the 8.4 million people currently living in food poverty in the UK. It produces pheasant-based meals in a pouch which can be stored for up to a year without chilling and has delivered more than half a million meals to charities across the UK. The Trust raised £114,000 for families in need. And we have more on this story later in the programme. The Country File Live event to be held at Castle Howard this summer has been cancelled due to a lack of sponsorship. It was held at the Stately Home in North Yorkshire for the first time last year and attracted around 50,000 visitors. The show, described as representing the best of British countryside, failed to attract enough exhibitors or sponsors to get the go-ahead in 2020. The Southern Show in Windsor will still go ahead. Mark Avery's been taking aim at the BBC's Farming Today programme for talking about game meat. The Wild Justice patrons slammed the broadcaster for covering Sophie Bagley's Yorkshire-based game meat business. The entrepreneur is successfully placing her locally shot produce in supermarkets across the country. But Avery says the game meat could contain lead shot and poses a health risk, so it should not be promoted by a public service broadcaster. Meanwhile, the BBC has been up to its old tricks of trying to monster hunting and shooting. In its coverage of the coronavirus outbreak in China, BBC journalists sensibly make the point that the kind of bushmeat available in outdoor markets in China may have helped cause or spread the deadly virus. However, in this report sent in by viewer Caroline Scott, they try to link coronavirus with all wild game, which is healthy and sustainable. The two big drivers are deforestation and the wildlife trade. 
Deforestation because we build roads into forests where wildlife live and they carry viruses that then get into people and spread. And the wildlife trade because people hunting and eating wildlife provides a perfect pathway for those viruses to get into our population. And if we're going to go out and hunt and eat wildlife in an unprecedented way on the planet now, we can expect more and more of these viruses. So let's look into ourselves and what we do to try and understand why this is happening. Macmillan will no longer promote its Meat Free March fundraising campaign after complaints from the farming community. The cancer support charity faced accusations of jumping on the vegan bandwagon with its hashtag Meat Free March campaign, which urged supporters to download posters saying so long to the sausage and bye bye for now burgers. Farmers on social media said it was a kick in the teeth after past fundraising efforts for the charity. Macmillan issued a statement which said, we are sorry that it's caused upset as this was never our intention. And I can confirm that we will not be continuing to actively promote this event. Hunters and shooters in Australia are stepping up to help bushfire victims. Our friends at the Beyond the Divide TV show have a bumper prize up for grabs in aid of the Australian Rural Disaster Fund. Rob Fickling got in touch to share the competition with our viewers. The first prize is kit worth more than £5,000 and a total prize pot of £9,000. Tickets are going for around £25 each and one ticket could win kit including a ticker rifle, Swarovski scope, Zeiss Bionos and more. Bilt magazine in Germany says it's uncovered the dark side of canned hunting. The magazine claims that professional hunters are offering to injure big cats in order to make them safe for hunting tourists to shoot. If true, this is not the kind of fair chase enshrined by hunting organisations such as Safari Club International. But it's not true, as Johan Bizu Denhut from HKK Safaris makes clear. As a PH, it's unethical to shoot a leopard in the foot and then go follow it up and shoot it. I never said anything towards that. And he was just twisting words of a discussion that we had earlier about shooting backup shots. So he put totally wrong information in the newspaper and it's offensive to me um, and he's just trying to get his ratings obviously. Uh, I'm just a professional hunter trying to make an honest living. Meanwhile, a UK company has a new initiative to make ethical African adventures more affordable. Global Outdoors is organising a management hunt for December but is allowing hunters to pay £50 a week towards it. Owner Sean Porter says as a company we're dedicated to making hunting abroad more affordable and more accessible to anyone who wants to try it. Germany has made it easier for farmers to kill wild wolves. A new law will help farmers better protect their livestock from Germany's rising wolf population. Livestock farmers now have the right to shoot wild wolves and wolf-dog hybrids if they're causing serious damage to animals, up to and including an entire wolf pack. Formerly farmers were only allowed to shoot if the wolves threatened the farmer's livelihood. The decision also provides financial compensation for farmers and shepherds in the case of an attack. Local game meat will be served at all preschool and care homes in a Swedish city. Bowden Municipality has signed an agreement with game meat supplier Cervantes Vilton Bar to supply locally sourced and organic moose and reindeer meat for the next two years. These pictures are recipe suggestions from the website, thanks to Per Helmseth for the story. It's now legal to hunt with a bow and arrow in Russia. President Vladimir Putin, an avid hunter, made the amendments to the federal law on approved weapons for hunting in August last year. The changes only came into effect last week. The number of hunters in the country has doubled in recent years and the president is keen to further develop the hunting industry. Bows can now be sold without restrictions but require registration with the National Guard within two weeks of purchase. Petter says the term pet is derogatory. President of the animal rights charity Ingrid Newkirk says she would use the word companion because using the word pet makes living things sound like a commodity or decoration. The group People for Ethical Treatment of Animals also wants owners to be renamed human carers or guardians. WWWF Norway has launched a petition to include the seasons on UNESCO's World Heritage List. Traditionally, the list features physical objects, but rising temperatures mean Oslo has lost 18 days of winter over the last 70 years. Bergens and the WWF argue climate change is threatening many of the physical places on the list, and they want the seasons included, as they meet nine out of the ten required criteria. And finally, the sharp shooting officer saved two deer, which had locked antlers in Canada. 
Fish and Wildlife Officer Scott Calwhite answered a call after a driver spotted two deer locked together in a field. Scott arrived at the scene, grabbed his 12-gauge shotgun and with one shot separated the deer, saving the life of both animals. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. And you can find more news on the front page of our website. There is a link in the description below. Now, the British Shooting Show is coming up on the 14th to the 16th of February 2020. And we have got a very good reason for you to visit our stand, which is half stand and half field sports channel theatre. That's how it'll be marked on the map because we are giving away four extraordinary experience days with Andy Crow, with Neil Rowntree, with Kai Aprin and with Paul Childerly. All you have to do is come to our stand and guess the venison that Kai will be preparing there. Then select the experience you'd like to win and what experiences they are. We have a pigeon shooting experience day with Andy Crow at his farm in Kent explaining hide building, decoy patterns and, we hope, if the pigeons are out, how to build a bag. Meanwhile, Paul Childerly is offering a Chinese water deer stalk on his ground in Bedfordshire. You'll be able to hear all about this enigmatic deer species from the man himself. Plus, you get to take some of the tastiest venison on the planet home with you. A third lucky winner will join Kayak Brin in his woodland kitchen in Sussex on a game preparation day. Learn how to skin and pluck and prepare in-season game. Then you get to enjoy al fresco dining courtesy of Game and Flames, his company. And finally, Neil Rowntree and West Highland Hunting are offering a deer management experience day plus Heinstalk on the fabulous Ardnamurkin estate in the Highlands of Scotland. Neil will explain how he looks after the wild red deer on the estate, then guide you across and over some of the most spectacular scenery in Scotland. Entry to the prize draw is just a tenner, and it all goes towards producing films that will change minds, influence policies and fight discrimination by supporting the Field Sports Nation and our straight shooting journalism. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Paul, Kai and Andy. We're supported by some really generous guys and please help us by supporting us too. Now to feather game, we're often charged with shooting more than we consume. Well, we don't think that's true anymore as this film brought to you by the Field Sports Nation will show demand is about to outstrip supply. Fast, exciting, edible. The boom in game shooting is putting pheasants on tables throughout the UK. Supermarkets are selling it, food banks are providing it. Now one man is looking at a market for all 30 million that we shoot. We could use absolutely every pheasant in this country and every partridge and still not really dent the surface of the poverty. The Country Food Trust now has ambitions to sell direct to some of the biggest catering markets in the country in order to raise funds for its core work. The Country Food Trust uh, was started in 2015 with a really simple idea. It's to take pheasants, turn them into delicious meals and feed them to people in need. So we've been doing that for, as I say, five years now. We've fed over 535,000 people. What made do you decide to choose pheasants as a food source? Um, I think pheasant is really, really good nutritious meat. Um, it's got less fat in it um, than a lot of other meats. Um, and I think a lot of people in the food banks have talked to us and said, we're looking for something different, a little bit more different to some of the traditional meats they were getting. The Country Food Trust works with organisations across the country, like this one, Haven, the Homeless and Vulnerable Outreach Network. There'll be about a team of three or four here. They'll be here prepping, whatever it's donations or whether we've been to Tesco's the night before. Then we'll get there for about six o'clock. We'll then start serving coffee and teas from the burger van. Food will be out for about 6.30 and we'll be there till about eight, nine, just talking with people, having some coffee, some food. Yeah. Yeah. So at the moment we've got Karen who's cutting hair in the background and just behind that wall there's a chiropodist and she's doing foot care because a lot of the homeless guys and a lot of the guys that come here have got problems with their feet from the way that they're living so that's nice we get um, get donations a lot of them gone out now but people donate um, sanitary items for the ladies we've got deodorant cleaning stuff wash packs We've got the occasional sleeping bag that we give out to rough sleepers if they're in a dire need for it. So we've got all sorts going on. Ricky, what made you want to start it up? I, I was homeless for a long time myself when I was younger. I was in and out of prison, um, I had bad drug problems, sleeping rough for like a year and a half. Sorted my life out quite a while ago, joined the forces, 
done 10 years in the forces, came back to the area and just, yeah, I thought that I'd always sort of thought to myself at some point, I'm going to have to put something back into society. And then I put a little post on Facebook asking whether anybody wanted to help me set anything up and somebody got in touch and then we slowly but surely still started Haven and yeah, we're still going. Haven relies solely on donations and receives no public funding. And for the last few months, the Country Food Trust has been supplying the charity with easy-to-cook meals served from a borrowed food truck on a car sales forecourt. More than 8.4 million people in the UK are classed as living in food poverty, which makes soup kitchens, much like this one here in Yeovil, an essential resource. Well, my wife brought me over here from Bermuda, and um, we've been living over here since 85, and uh, we got divorced about 10 years ago, and I've been on my own since then, and uh, oh, we're still good friends. And what does it mean for you to be able to come somewhere like this and have some, some hot food? A lot. I'm down on my luck, but it won't be for long, because I will have some money, but right now I'm down on my luck. And, uh, a hot meal. Yeah, it's not every day, but, you know, it helps. It all adds up, you know. And what do you think of the pheasant? Excellent. Excellent. Didn't even know it was pheasant, to tell you the truth. What do you think it could have been? Well, I just thought it was chicken going. Yeah, sometimes but it's it tastes good, definitely, yeah. Great. Um, I didn't know you could um, do a pheasant like that. So, yeah, yeah definitely worth doing again, yeah, definitely. Part of this is to prevent footage like this, filmed by animal rights activists, which took place last year in Leicestershire, even though these birds turned out to have been breasted. There's an enormous amount of people we have to feed, so yes, we could use absolutely every pheasant in this country and every partridge and still not really dent the surface of the poverty. I've never done the maths. If it's 8.4 million people, let's assume that, and they need to be fed once a day, I mean, the bare minimum, but approximately speaking, it costs us somewhere around a pound a a meal that we donate to people in need. So let's say there's 8.4 million. If you gave me 8.4 million pounds, I'd feed everybody once a year. The Country Food Trust is not the first or even the only agency to market game. Basque has taste of game, the Countryside Alliance has game to eat, and both of them back the British Game Alliance. As well as providing recipes, these concentrate on selling to supermarkets and teaching catering students how to cook game. Thanks to them, more and more people are buying game, but still only one in six of the British public. We take to the streets of Salisbury to see what appetite there is for game meat pasties and sausage rolls from Wild and Game. Mmm, quite nice, actually. Just tastes like normal or other kind of types of meat. You wouldn't think that it's like pheasant. Yeah. <laughs> Taste of food. Yep, it's very nice. Mm. What does it taste like? It's quite solid. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, it's nice. I like the pastry. It's nice and light. <laughs> very nice. Thank you. The next step for the Country Food Trust is to sell its products direct to the biggest catering markets in the country, feeding schools, the military, prisons and hospitals. This will raise funds to enable them to produce more for those in need. The problem is money. Do you think that the government could be doing more? I'm not doing that question. For more about the Country Food Trust, visit thecountryfoodtrust.org and for Wild and Game's range of game meat, pasties, sausage rolls and much more, go to wildandgame.co.uk. Thank you, Amy. And I can reveal that Amy will be joining us as news editor so we can ruffle even more feathers welcome amy next up from food banks to the wider world of hunting and shooting on youtube it is hunting youtube
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. There are plenty of Beatus Day films on YouTube as the British pheasant shooting season comes to an end. I enjoyed this one from Vance Paid shooting on a Northwest shooting estate in sleet and snow, though it really didn't happen in October 2020. Glenn Fowler in Australia recommends this series from the USA about duck shooting. Ramsey Russell's Get Ducks series is on the Blood Origins channel, and this one is season 4, episode 7. My Outdoor TV is breaking free from the shackles of subscription and putting up the occasional TV show on YouTube. Viewer Alexander Laver sends in this one, which shows what he calls a bit of Norfolk Winter Morning Glory hunting field to fork. Thanks to Aussie Daz from the Into the Mountain channel who puts out this one hour film about hunting samba deer in Australia. It's a record of a few days in the mountains. Across the water, Wild NZ is after his first seeker deer of 2020. It is, as he says, a little evening hunt with the aim of bringing home some tasty venison for his brother's wedding. Joseph Carter the Mink Man has a pheasant farm rat infestation on his hands. He shows off the impressive ratting skills of his mink. It had a million views in just a few days, thanks to a viewer called Ian for suggesting it. It's product launch season, here's a stylish promo for Browning's new X-Bolt rifles for 2020, including the X-Bolt Max Varmint Target, the X-Bolt Hells Canyon Speed TDX, and the X-Bolt Hunter Long Range, including tripods by Spartan Precision Equipment. And finally, how hard can it be shooting a pheasant with a bow, asks Clay Newcomb. Turns out it's hard. Watch 16 slow-mo misses and one spectacular hit as Clay takes to the great Kansas outdoors. That's it for this week, I've put all these films into a playlist for you, click on the eye symbol top right, or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, or the quick way is F channel. There are links in the description below. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. And best of all, pop your email address into our register page. And we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing. And goodbye.